this is the, it's your channel. You tell the people. Well, clearly it's going to be your channel soon because we're going to a bookstore to buy a book for you. I don't know why you think that's so crazy. I don't think it's crazy. I just am really excited that you're entering your, your bookish era again. I think that you're going to be on the channel soon so we can talk about books and we can talk about your reading history and what you're currently reading. You act all shy. You're not, not don't. Oops. We're going to the bookstore. I actually don't have anything on my list to get. I am just going and looking and probably won't buy anything, but I might. And we're going to trade your Joe's. Are we doing frozen pizza tonight? That's fine with me. We're doing frozen pizza tonight. And I need to get some things at Trader Joe's. What did you say? You're ridiculous. All right, we just left the bookstore. I did not buy anything. Because Shocker. But you did. What did you get? I got a Sanderson short story. You gotta, and... you gotta model it. That's right you gotta show it. We don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, what is it again? Sorry. It's a Sanderson short story collection. What did you just finish reading? Mistborn. How was it? It was very good. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Someone just got a bath. Oh gosh, he can't even handle it. The clean. He's too clean. <laughs> it's okay. Hmm. What's today, hero? You're like your dad, you won't tell me. Today is Monday. Today is Monday. <laughs> we have today off, thank God. Um, and I thought I would do a little reading update. I've been kind of bad this weekend and not. I haven't done an update. I have been reading. I just have been wanting to make some progress before I do any sort of update since I am reading two books. One of them is an essay collection. Let me pull it up. It is Too Much and Not the Mood. And the first essay is really long. It was about, I wanna say it was over 90 pages. Yeah, it was about 90 pages. So it took me a little bit to get through it. And I was also marking up like every other page. Um, you can see all of the dog ears that I have here. I've written all over it. There were some really amazing parts. The first essay is called Heart Museum. And I'm gonna go more into depth at the end of my month review and probably once I do like a wrap up of this vlog, but I really, really enjoyed this essay. There's one part specifically that just, I read it over and over and over again. I actually read it out loud to Michael because I was like, this is just too good. I wish I 
could write like this or when I wrote artist statements I wish that my artist statement had been as great as this was but it's um Durga Chibos the author is talking about she's describing her like best friend but she's describing her as a Cy Twombly painting or how it feels to stand in front of a Cy Twombly and it's just some of the most beautiful writing. If someone ever wrote about me as a painting or a collection of paintings by an artist, I I don't know what I would do, but I think it would be just in incredible. Um, I underlined a ton of things and then at the bottom of it, or at the end of it, I just wrote, holy wow. Um, and then I had heard a lot of people that I know who have read this collection talk about the Nook people. And I was always like, well, what are the Nook people? And then I was like, I'm a Nook person. I'm a Nook person. I was like, oh, I don't know what a Nook person is, but sounds like I might be one as well. And sure enough, I am a Nook person. And if you have read this essay collection, please comment below and let me know if you're a Nook person. Um, and if you haven't read this, I encourage you to. If you are in any way someone who loves to be silently on their own, who feels out of place in crowds, who just seems to take in the beauty of the world and feel it really, really deeply. Also, someone who just feels emotions in, in like every sense that they have. Um, like all five senses is how you like absorb an emotion or feel an emotion. I would say you're a Nook person. Um, sorry, I was getting comfy. But yeah, I'm really enjoying this essay collection. I'm going to keep obviously reading it. I just wanted to get through the first one and then I started um reading the complete stories of Leonora Carrington um Leonora Carrington is a was a surrealist painter I've known her work I've studied her work before but I've never read her writing yeah I started this last night the stories are very short some are like three to six pages they're extremely surreal they're really whimsical and playful um they have like this really dark kind of feel to them at um at times especially the first one, which is uh, the debutante where a girl doesn't want to go to her debutante ball and she she befriends a hyena at the zoo and the hyena says, I will go in your place. And there's involvement of eating a maid and peeling her face and wearing her face. So they're just very, they're odd, but they're really good. Like I, as I'm reading them, I'm getting like very clear visuals. I can almost see her art her art style and painting style like I can see the story evolving as like a painting if that makes sense so I'm really enjoying these I've maybe only read like four of the stories so far so I still have quite a ways to go but I wanted to do just a little update because I feel like I've been reading a little bit slower the past past few days I've just been busy doing other things and yeah so I will I will do another update soon but today sucks I keep getting I've applied to I've been applying to new jobs since like over the summer and like really heavily hitting it hard in like October and early November and I've applied to like 50 jobs I've maybe heard back from half of those but the one that I was really hoping to hear at least that I would get an interview from um sent me uh saying like they wouldn't be proceeding with an interview and I've just gotten too many of those emails and finally I couldn't take it anymore after getting so many of those and I, before 9 a.m. I was in tears. So, and then I had to get ready to go to the eye doctor. So that's what I've done this morning. I've cried, I've gone to the eye doctor and I've reheated homemade ramen. So, success. But yeah, I'm just feeling like garbage today. I am going to take it easy the rest of the day. Maybe do some editing, watch some YouTube videos, get some reading done. And then it's back to work tomorrow. But I wanted to show you Hero really fast. Look at him. Watch if I stop petting him, what he'll do. Oh, of course, now he won't do it. Ah, there he goes. I, so I've had the same two flower bouquets for the past few weeks. Somehow the carnations that I bought on New Year's Eve are thriving. Like they're, they're not dead in any way. Like the stems are perfectly healthy and green. I don't understand it. I've never, I've had flowers last me a really long time, but I've never had flowers last this long. And so I, um, I, I made one bouquet. I took out some of the dead ones from another bouquet that I had, and I went ahead and 
this Cricut and I went ahead and made one bouquet and I'm going to show it to you because it's really, really beautiful. Come on. Look at it. I love it. It has movement. I love this upward movement of, and the yellow peeking through with the green. I just feel like it just, all of these flowers from various bouquets are really, are really beautiful all together. So yes, this is my bright spot from the day. I've been kind of bummed that I haven't been able to buy a new bouquet of flowers this week, but then I realized I've been able to recreate and make something new with all of the different pieces. And yeah, I'm sure there's something really symbolic and sentimental behind that, but they're really beautiful. I'm very happy with them. Okay, I'm gonna cry over flowers, bye. All right, y'all, my mom just dropped by and left us half of a king cake. It's from ATV. I know that's not like the most legitimate, sorry, king. People, people don't know what ATV is either. Oh. From oh, that's right. I always forget, like, I've grown up in Texas my whole life, and I just assume everyone knows what everything is, and then meeting someone who's not from Texas, I, yeah, he doesn't know things, so he tells me when it's like, no one knows what you're talking about. Okay, so H-E-B is a chain grocery store here in Texas, and it is, like, the king of all grocery stores. Like, when people leave Texas, they have people ship things to them that are specifically H-E-B brand, or they will like take things in their suitcase back. So H-E-B is a chain grocery store here in Texas and it's, it is pretty great. But for a king cake, like I'd rather get a king cake obviously from Louisiana, which my mom will probably get me from a friend to have her bring it over from Louisiana. But anyway, in the meantime, she brought us this raspberry king cake. Oh my God. I love king cake, you guys. I'm not a sugary sweet person, but king cake is like, the king of all cakes and <laughs> if you don't know this about me which you probably don't yet what's my favorite food michael probably cake probably it is definitely cake my favorite food in the whole world is cake next to tortilla chips but cake is my favorite so there's the king cake you didn't explain the prize in the middle um usually there's like a little plastic baby inside and I, like whoever finds the baby like you have good luck for a year. Um, this one probably had a baby that was off on the side. I don't think my mom put it in there, but yeah, they're, they have all different fillings and it's like a bread and then they fold in the fillings. They do all sorts of different fruit fillings. There's like a coffee cake one, there's plain, you can do almond paste. And then it has like this royal icing and then it's covered in traditional Mardi Gras colors. So gold, purple, and green. Okay, you're welcome. I'm going to go eat this now. Bye. just finished reading Too Much and Not in the Mood, the essay collection by Durga Chubos, and it was great. Um, I was thinking I would record like my reaction after processing it for a little while, but everything's so fresh that I felt like I could probably just do it now. I really, really enjoyed it. I didn't really give too much about the essay collection um, when I last spoke to you because I had already like I just finished reading the first essay and I wanted to get through a bit more. But I also realized I didn't do a very good job of telling you who the author is and a little bit about her. Durga Chubos is from Canada and her parents are from Calcutta, India. And she's writing about her family, very much about her family, about her being a first generation woman of color as well. A lot of the essays are they're about very different things, but inter like a connector is very much family. Her feelings around growing up and perceiving the world and how she is perceived as a woman of color and a first generation. 
um, woman of color. The, the essays don't have a like clear theme running through them like some essay collections do. This is very much a collection of various works um, of hers. But the title itself, um, Too Much and Not the Mood, from Virginia Woolf's ending to, I have it written down here because I didn't want to forget, um, it's ending to a writer's diary describing how tired she was of correcting her own writing to please other readers, wondering if she had anything that was truly worth saying. And once I did a little more background, because I, I don't know a ton about Virginia Woolf or about her writing, um, that's something I like to correct, but knowing, like doing some research and finding out about that, I was like, this collection makes so much sense because you really do get the sense that Durga is writing and putting all of these essays together that she, she just wants out there. And I'm so happy that FSG, who is the publisher of this, did that and um, created, like allowed her to put all of these essays together and they didn't need to be separate or in a cohesive collection. I feel like pretty much all the essays are like a solid four. There are some clear fives. Um, the first essay being one of them, which was the 90 page essay that I talked about, Heart Museum. That essay is a five star essay. It is fantastic. My next favorite was probably Since Living Alone. That is an excellent, excellent essay. And I'm actually gonna talk more about that. So I have my, my little notes because I didn't let this marinate for very long. So all my notes are very much like things I jotted down as I was reading. So I'm kind of using them as reference. When I do my end of the month review, I'll probably have a much more cohesive breakdown of this. Something that I noticed while I was reading, mainly it kind of hit me at the end, like towards the last few um, stories, but definitely was something that was clearly what I was feeling. I just didn't understand what exactly it was, but every sentence has an exact feeling to them. Like she takes feelings that we've likely all had, or at least that I know that I've had, and I've not maybe known how to describe them or how to put words to them. They're just this really deep feeling, like this thing you just, you're like, I must be the only person who thinks this about whatever it could be, but has these weird questions. And you're like, I don't ever want to ask them out loud because I'm probably the only one with these thoughts. And while reading this, it was one of those things where you're like, I'm not alone in my thoughts. I'm not alone in these questions of the world and feelings I have being in the world. I'm not just alone in feeling things really deeply, which goes back to the conversation about the Nook people. And like Durga, you can tell is just someone who takes in the world and just absorbs it and questions it and reflects on it and feels it very, very deeply. And to read an, someone writing about that and trying to put those feelings into words, those emotions into words is just really comforting because like I talked about how you're feeling every sense, like as a super emotional and in tune person to the world who questions so much and feels so much, I oftentimes go out into the world and what most people would maybe not, I don't want to say not feel, but like what most people wouldn't be affected by as deeply, I feel deeply affected by. And I experience them in like all five of my senses extremely deeply. Could be that I'm a cancer and that's probably why, but there are just some of us who are like this. Yeah, I just, she just solidifies those unexplainable into the most per perfect and concise sentences. One sentence and all I wrote next to it was therapy because it's something that I have tried explaining in therapy many times and I feel I'm, I know the person listening to me understands, but I still feel like it's a thing that I can't quite express properly. If you share too much of yourself, you risk growing into someone who has nothing unacknowledged. And I'm like, that's a feeling I feel all the time. That if I give too much, that if I say too much, that if I feel too much, then like no one, no one will notice anything about me anymore. Like I will have given everything. And it's just like, to see it written, I've tried expressing this so many times how I'm like, friendships scare me. I really want friendships, but they scare me because I fear that if I give that, I feel that I am too much as a person. And I feel if I give 
too much of myself, then no one will want to know me anymore. I will have been enough for them kind of. And I feel like when I read that, I was just like, just expressed it so perfectly because even now I can't express it properly. But there's just so many moments like this. So there's this moment where she's talking about a painting. Sorry, I thought the mail was coming. Okay. So even when I'm caught off guard by a lathery shaded peach on the bottom corner of a painting at the Met, as if being reminded that I haven't seen all the colors and how there's more to see and how one's colors and how one color's newness can invalidate all of my sureness to experience infinity and sometimes to the teasing melancholy born from the smallest breakthroughs, like an unanticipated shade of peach. Like, yeah. Like how a color just can be so much and how this shade of peach at the bottom corner of a painting created that, those few sentences. Like that's how most of this essay collection is. It's really quite beautiful. There, um, there are a lot, there are lots of moments where culture, movies, music, films, art are really mixed in and I think that is really a lot of the media I maybe didn't know about certain movies some movies I did know about and I think that definitely enhances a lot of the essays because it lets us know more about Durga as what influenced her maybe growing up art and creative wise and media wise and what influences her now but I think it also acts as great accompaniments to these essays one in particular that um, was brought up in the Since Living Alone essay. Living Alone, I soon caught on, is a form of self-portraiture, of retracing the same lines over and over of becoming. Like, yes, yes is yes. Um, so in the essay Since Living Alone, she references a painting by the Swedish painter Karen Mama Anderson. Um, the painting is titled Leftovers. I'm actually going to put a photo of it here because it's beautiful and I did not know about this artist or their work and I plan on doing much more research on these paintings because they're beautiful but um, it's of a woman in her apartment and she's occupying the space in five separate moments and the section where Durga writes about that painting and how it reflects upon her time living alone and her memories of living alone and being alone in a space just so perfectly i looked up the painting while reading because i've never seen this painting and it's just so beautiful to see that painting to read that essay and if you've ever lived alone even if it was just for a short period of time i feel or if you're ever alone in a space i feel that there's just so much right about that essay and so much right about that painting and the still moments of lived experience that we probably all had. But yeah, there's just so many moments where I feel that not only are the, the, the paintings and the movies she's referencing and the specific moments within those movies that she's referencing so like so great at distilling a feeling, just like an emotion is so distilled perfectly. And I feel that that is what this essay collection is. It is a feeling, it's an emotion, it's a color distilled into sentences, into paragraphs, into essays. I just highly recommend this. It could easily be a favorite read by the end of the year if it sits with me long enough and I keep thinking about it and going back, it could possibly be. But like, look at all of that. I folded it every which way. There's pen marks everywhere. It's, it's excellent. It's so good. I was so desperate to come on here and talk for 15 minutes about this. As soon as I finished it, I mean, I finished it five minutes ago and I just had to come in and be like, let me tell you about this. Let me put this painting here. Let me tell you about these essays. If you read this and you want to chat about it, please leave me a comment and we can chat about it and we can coordinate something. If you haven't read this and you're interested, I highly recommend picking it up. Yeah, I just really, really recommend it. It's great. Um, but yeah. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye. Also, I'm looking through a window so it's probably not the best view but this is what the sky looked like the whole time I was filming that little segment outside the window that I had open it's just beautiful it's good and talking about colors and just feeling such deep emotions over things like a 
peachy shade in a cloud or in a painting. Just, yeah, I wanted to capture this for you all. Okay, done being all sentimental. Goodbye. happy Friday. I wanted to go ahead and close out this vlog. I decided that at the end of my month wrap up, I want to do like a reflection of backlog January and also kind of update you again on the books that I read for that specific challenge I made for myself and also the books that I read the rest of the month because I have started to read some other books as we get towards the last week and a half of this month. Um, I'm reading books that are no longer a part of that backlog January because I've almost completed all of them. I really wanted to read two books this week. I thought that I could um, I could mix a short story collection and an essay collection and kind of mix them around, but the essay collection really needed a lot of my time and I'm actually really grateful that I was able to devote my time to that and really like invest and absorb it and talk about it a little bit more in depth and spend more time on it reflection wise. So that means that the complete stories of Leonora Carrington kind of got put on the back burner. I have read a bit, I need to keep reading it. I do wanna finish it this month and I think that I can. They're fairly short stories. Um, some are five or six pages, others are a little bit longer, but nothing too crazy. I am enjoying it. I feel like I, I after reading the essay collection that I just finished, I feel like that was such a, amazing read and I was like on such a high after reading that that this is falling just a tiny bit short they're very different obviously because these are short stories it's fiction but I was sort of maybe not ready to jump into this and I'm going to get into that more when I do my backlog January reflection and how TBRs work for my brain but I do want to finish this this month so I will keep reading it I do want to reflect on it I want to share some art um, from this surrealist artist. I want to share a little bit more about her. And so that's what I plan on doing probably at my end of the month, but I might also work on a vlog this week. I'm not super sure, but I might do a vlog this week where I finish this and possibly finish Whereabouts by Jim Bullahiri. I'm currently reading this. I started it last night. I really couldn't put it down. It is what I love to read. Just a woman who is in an unnamed place, unnamed narrator, super introspective. I'm having a really great time with this. So maybe we'll group these both together and read them for another vlog, but we'll see. Anywho, I just wanted to end this vlog here, let you know what my plans kind of are for um, the end of the month. I'm thinking of doing a small don't love this phrase, book haul. I mainly just, maybe I'll just call it like a recent acquisition, recent literary acquisitions. I'm thinking of doing a little video on that um, from some books that I've kind of gathered or purchased since around Christmas time or the holiday time. Um, just me buying books at small bookstores around the city. Um, actually thinking about going to one today because I just got done with work. And then also just, I did get gift cards at Christmas for some of the bigger bookstores. So I wanted to, I, I did want to get those used. So I did, um, but I would like to show you maybe the stuff that I bought. And yeah, thanks for watching this vlog. I'm actually really pleased with this vlog. I'm really happy with my reading this week and how I reflected on it and just the conversation that I was able to have with myself, but also share with you. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate you hitting the like button, maybe sharing this with somebody else, leave a comment. Um, like I said, let me know if you've read Too Much in the Mood by Durga Chubos. Let me know if you're a Nook person. Um, yeah, just leave a comment, say hi. And yeah, I just want to say thanks for being here and remember to take care of yourself and always be kind and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. The true stars of the channel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, bye.